Hello and welcome. In this guide, we will look at the best settings in action to achieve the highest quality recordings. The gameplay you are watching from Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor was captured using the settings detailed in this guide. I will explain most of the options so that you know what they do and how they might affect recording quality and performance. If you do not wish to know the details, you can just copy the settings from each tab and skip to the next. But knowing what each setting does may help you troubleshoot issues in the future and save you time in the long run. It will also give you an idea of what settings to tweak if you experience performance issues, and I will mention these as we go along as well. Ok, let's get started. After opening action, start by setting the location where your recorded files will be saved. You can leave the default location if you wish, but if your PC has more than one drive, I would recommend setting the recording directory to be separate from the directory that your games and applications are run from. I have two solid state hard drives, and run my games and applications from my C drive and set action to record to my B drive. This usually leads to better performance, as the task of running and recording a game are shared between the two drives. If you're able to do this I highly recommend it, but using a single drive for both tasks is entirely acceptable. Use the fastest drives you have available for running your games and applications, and for recording. Solid state drives are a great choice here, as they are more than capable of keeping up with the amount of data being written. Now let's take a look at the video recording tab. Under the video recording tab select your recording mode. I'll be using active screen as I have two displays, but you can also use games and applications. The settings are the same for both. Select the following options. File Format AVI. This will provide you the best quality raw file to edit later in your program of choice. The AVI option will create much larger files than MP4, but will be higher quality. If storage space is a concern, you could use MP4 which has compression applied to it by action. But I would recommend AVI if possible. If you choose MP4 recording, you'll also need to select a hardware acceleration option. This will be based on your hardware, so I'm unable to cover all the different possibilities in this guide. Video Size Original Setting this option to Original will record whatever resolution and aspect ratio your display is running at. I have two displays with different aspect ratios, one being 16x9 and the other 21x9. I always record using my 16x9, as this aspect ratio is the one that most people use. If I record using 21x9, there will be black borders around my videos for anyone watching on a 16x9 display. Setting a video size option to original records whatever resolution and aspect ratio your active display is running at, even if it is not a directly selectable resolution. So for anything not covered by the specified video size options, use the original setting. If you want to select one of the other options you can, but original will suit whatever resolution you normally use, even 1080p. If you have a specific reason to record a lower resolution, then go ahead and select it from the list. Video frame rate 60. I use this setting to record gaming footage, but you could switch to 30 frames per second for other recordings such as desktop capture and similar projects if you want to. For gaming though, 60 frames per second will give the viewer a smoother and more pleasant experience. Just try to make sure that you can achieve 60 frames per second in the game you're playing. If not, I prefer to lower graphic settings until I can get as close to 60 frames per second as possible, as I believe this gives the viewer the best experience. Microphone always record. I set this to always record, as I will edit out anything unwanted later, and prefer not to have to push a button to talk. If your situation is different, select any option you like here. Audio recording tab. Output format WAV, or WAVE if you prefer. For the same reasons as we selected AVI in the video recordings tab, Let's start with a raw, high quality audio recording and then edit and re-encode later in our video editing software. If space is a concern, you can try MP4. Microphone always record. And again, that's so that we don't have to push a button to talk. Allow multi-channel recording. Check this box to enable recording of two separate audio channels at once. In our case, this will be the game or application sound and our microphone. Later in this guide, we'll set up recording our microphone into a separate audio track from our game or application sound. General settings tab. This tab has multiple sub tabs, so let's start with the video recording settings. Video quality ultra. Higher settings mean better quality at the cost of larger files. You can lower this setting and the bitrate option if your PC struggles, but try to keep both as high as possible to achieve the best quality recordings. Bitrate MP4, 100%. A higher bitrate will result in better quality but larger files. Again, play around with this and the video quality setting above if your PC is struggling. Otherwise, keep them both at the highest settings. 
input range 0 to 2554. This is usually the best setting for most scenarios, but it's possible you could find that 16 to 235 gives a better result on some occasions. I've never found cause to use 16 to 235, but if you're unhappy with your end result, or you're looking to troubleshoot an issue, you could try changing this setting. Use multi-call recording. Check this box to enable it. This allows Action to use its own optimised encoding algorithm for recording. If you're suffering performance issues, you can try disabling this setting, which will cause Action to record using a single CPU core. I recommend you have it checked if possible though. Record mouse cursor. You may not need this for game recording, but do check this box if you plan to create any tutorial videos that would benefit from the viewer being able to see where your mouse cursor is. In this situation, you may want to enable the next option as well, which is visualize mouse clicks. Checking this box adds an animated mouse click visual effect to the mouse cursor. This can be useful to assist the viewer in keeping track of your mouse, but note that this only works when using the video size original, uh, which is an option we discussed earlier under the video recording section. Audio settings tab. Record system sounds. Check this if you want to record the sound from an application or a game you're running. Allow multi-channel recording. Check this for the same reason mentioned in the allow multi-channel recording section previously. Audio device. Select the device from the list that you use to playback audio. In my case, it's the headphone output of my Blue Yeti microphone. AAC, we can leave at default. When you leave it at default, it will record at your system default settings. If you prefer, you can choose a specific bit rate. Microphone settings tab, audio device. Just select your microphone from the list here. Record microphone into separate audio track. Uh, we want to enable this option. We want our microphone audio in a separate track so that we can edit it later. By having a separate audio track, we can work on the audio recorded by your microphone individually without affecting the audio recorded from our game or application. This will enable us to get rid of plosives and sibilants, for example. This is very important if you want to make high quality videos and present a professional image to your viewers. Audio balance settings, system sound and microphone. These options are more important when using action live streaming as then the balance between your system sound and microphone audio will be of greater importance. As this guide is not focused on live streaming, we can adjust audio levels during our video editing process and we've already set up recording into two separate audio tracks to make this possible later. HUD settings. Do not record HUD during desktop recording. Enabling this hides the HUD display during recording, which is a small box that shows action related information on your screen. I always hide the HUD and suggest that you do so as well, unless you have a reason for wanting your viewers to see it. Do not record HUD in games and applications. And that's for the same reasons we just talked about. Export settings. Use hardware acceleration for video encoding. Enable this to speed up exporting and lower CPU usage. Export mouse cursor and visualizations. Enable both of these options unless you don't want the mouse cursor to show in your recordings. The visualization option will not have any effect unless you've enabled the visualize mouse clicks option under the video recording settings tab earlier in the guide. If you choose to enable that option later, you may as well have this one checked too, in case you forget to do so when you want them to be exported in the future. Hotkey settings. You can choose whatever you want here or leave the default. The only recommendation I have is that you ensure that the hotkeys you select or the defaults if you use them do not clash with hotkeys used in a program or game you're recording. If you want to reset your hotkeys to default, unfortunately, there's no option to do so within action. So here's a list of the default hotkeys for your reference. I wish you the best of luck with your recording projects and please leave any feedback you have regarding this guide in the comments below. If you found this information useful, please like, share and subscribe and check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.